Good everyone, this is Andrew Price here for another Blender Guru tutorial. And in this video, you'll discover the basics of how to use Cycles Baking, which allows you to essentially freeze all of the light calculations that are done during rendering and save it directly onto your mesh. Thus, allowing you to then view the scene in real time. This makes it incredibly powerful for animations, particularly for a camera moving shot and an invaluable tool for game design. But how does it work? Well, let's say you have a scene like this. First thing you want to do is split the view and load up the UV image editor. Then with the plane here selected, we're going to UV unwrap it. Everything that needs to be baked needs to be UV unwrapped. Then. With that, you want to add in a new blank image for your baking data to be saved onto. So go ahead and click on new, and uh, we're gonna give it a name, something imaginative. And uh, the width and the height, that is gonna depend on how high resolution you want the uh, resulting bake to be. But the default is uh, usually 1000 by 24, so I'm gonna go by that, or 1024, yep. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to split the view again and then go to the node editor. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in an image texture. And with this image texture, I'm just going to select the name of that new image that we just created that says floor. Then with this selected, and it has to be selected, make sure it's got an orange outline around it. Then go to render, the render panel. And then down here, way at the bottom, you've got a new option that says bake. So go ahead and click on that and you will now see this. So you can see that this is the plane with the shadows and the light baked directly onto it. And this is now saved as an image which you can then use as a texture for the shader which will allow us to do real time. But first, before we do that, because I'll do the, the final reveal soon, uh, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing with the cube here. So let me just add in a few easy cuts here just so that we can UV unwrap it. Da, 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 da. Add in a new image for this one. Call it cube. This one I'm going to make a little bit smaller. The smaller you make the size, by the way, the faster it will bake. All right. Do the exact same thing. Add a new material. Image texture. This one is going to be selected as cube because that's where it's going to be baked to. Make sure it's orange outline selected and then click on bake. And there you go. That was really quick. Okay. So now. In order to see this in real time, this is what you do. First, you add in an emission shader. Then you drag the output from the image texture into the emission shader, and then use that as your material. Do the exact same thing for the plane over here. Emission shader, drag this in. So this is now essentially just projecting it like a light box with our baked data. And then look at this, go into material viewport shading, bam amazing so if it's the first time you've ever seen this before it can be pretty mind-blowing that you can now see everything in real time so before it was three seconds per frame but you can see now I'm moving around it freely and in you zoom in you can see it's a little bit grainy and that's where it's actually been uh, baked onto the physical mesh itself so you can get rid of that graininess by increasing the sample amount or by increasing the size of the actual uh, baked image there. But you might be asking, this is a very simple looking scene. So what if you had something more complex, something with textures and stuff? So let's do exactly that. So I'm um, first of all, um, yeah, let's go ahead and make this uh, look like a concrete ground, okay? So I'm gonna add in my own texture over here. I've got a bunch here of my own. I'm gonna use this texture. And I'm just going to apply it like I would normally. So I'm going to get rid of this, pretend that the uh, the baking thing is not there, <laughs> right? And uh, I'm going to add this in. Let's have a look at this in rendered view mode. Okay, and uh, it's a little bit big, so I'm even going to get a little bit fancy and uh, increase the scaling of this with a scaling node like this. Okay, that's not displaying. Oh, didn't connect like that there we go okay and then i can even actually add in some bump mapping as well so let's add in another image texture and i'm going to use a normal map 
because your baking, this, this cycle's baking, can actually calculate and save in the bump mapping into your mesh as well, which is really cool. So let's add in a normal map mode. You don't need to follow along with this, by the way. This is just to demonstrate how you can use the bump mapping as well. Okay, like that, which is good. Um, all right, and so now that we've got this, we've got this new shadow and everything else going on, um, what we want to do is uh, essentially just select our original image texture over here, the one that says floor on it, and with all this node set, doesn't matter what you've got down here, provided you've just selected this as your, your last image texture selected, then hit bake. We now have all of that, the image texture, along with its scaling and the bump mapping, saved into this uh, baked file over here, which is really, really cool. By the way, you might want to, because sometimes you can lose this image, um, is actually save the image physically. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit uh, save right there, just in case you lose it. All right, and then since, uh, I mean, the bounce lighting might have changed slightly on this, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, rebake my cube here whilst I'm at it and then just connect that up connect this one over to here and there you go so you can see it's really really super easy to uh, to bake things regardless of you know what sort of image texturing you've got going on or how complex your scene is provided everything is UV unwrapped um, you can bake it and uh, it's then viewable in real time. So you can see with the camera selected, you could do a really uh, easy and fast animation uh, with this because instead of it having to take, you know, upwards of two minutes, depending on, you know, the size of your scene or whatever, um, you can do it just in real time, essentially. So it's really, really handy, especially for game development. But we've only really explored, uh, you know, one sort of part of, of uh, baking because you'll see down here underneath the baking options you've got something that says bake type and by default it's set to combined which is you know it does everything so it saves the light it saves the color it's the the bounce lighting everything it saves it all onto the mesh which is generally what you want but let's say that you only want to save one type of it. So you only want to save the shadows or you only want to save, I don't know, the environment lighting. You can do that and I'll show you how you can use this. So let's say instead of this cube here, we instead have the Suzanne monkey head. A little bit morbid, just having a random severed head, but let's look past that for the moment. Um, and with this head here, we're going to give it a really uh, annoying material, which is glass. And we want this glass to be slightly colored. I'm gonna make it a little bit orangey colored like this. And I want there to be caustics. So I'm gonna leave my caustics on. And let's have a look at this in uh, rendered view mode. Let's just set all the materials back to the way they were. And uh, as I said, I want there to be some caustics. So let me just grab this, uh, grab this sun lamp over here. I'm just gonna increase this light and what you can do, because the caustics are very hard to see there, I'm gonna turn up the filter glossy so that, that caustic starts to show through. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna position the camera. Let's just Matt, grab this camera around just so that we can do a comparison of before and after. I'm gonna show you something really cool of how you can save time for something like this. Because caustics generally take a really long time to render. So if we were to render this at 1000 samples, because that's generally something that you'll need because caustics are very, very noisy. I'll pause this while it's rendering. Okay, there we go. It is 51 seconds it took to render uh, this one uh, frame here because of the caustics. Caustics are very uh, memory intensive and you know, whatever. So let's say we want to bake just the caustics. Um, we can do that using our new cycles baking tool. So with our mesh here selected, what I'm gonna do is instead of baking combined, I'm going to bake indirect and then with this selected make sure you have the floor image texture selected um, I'm actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add a new image I'm gonna call this one caustics and the reason I'm adding a new one is I'm gonna increase the size so instead of it being 124 what it was before I'm gonna double that to be 2048 just because uh, we want to be able to, we've got a close-up of the caustics we want to be able to see it uh, a little bit 
more clearly. So we're going to use a higher image. Now this will take longer to uh, bake, but that is what you want if you want uh, clearer looking results. So in order to bake this, you just go back to the image texture, which is where we did our bake before, but instead of it being set to floor, because we've added in the new name here, which is caustics, we need to select caustics for the image texture. Then once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and click on bake. Now this might take a little while. I'm going to guess probably about five minutes, um, but let's have a look at this when it's finished. Okay, so that took, uh, yeah, kind of like five minutes. So as you can see, instead of it being the full combined bake, we've now got just the indirect light bounces, which is of course including all that nice caustics. So we can use this in our scene to save time on rendering. This is how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna keep our, you know, uh, plain floor the way it is at the moment with the diffuse shader. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in our caustics with the emission shader and I'm going to add those two shaders together. And this is the result that it's going to give me. Let's just see. Check this out, right? So let's go into rendered view mode. And you can see that's now showing through. This big bright patch is showing through underneath uh, the shadow of that. So now what we can do is actually turn off or turn on no caustics, kind of a double negative. Turn on no caustics, which is gonna save us in the render times, which means now, so this before this render here was 51 seconds. So let's go to uh, render this again. We can actually use 200 samples because we don't need all that caustics data anymore. And let's give this another render and let's see how quickly it renders now. Seven seconds as opposed to 51. Well, the camera moves slightly there, but you get the point. So uh, it looks a little bit different. So you could, I guess, turn down the strength of it. I suppose, and that might give you a slightly better result or closer to it. Um, but you can see how this could be useful. So even though this is like one still frame, and you might be thinking like, hey, is it really worth all that effort for one still frame? If you were doing an animation, let's say you were doing an animation which was 10 seconds long. Well, at 51 seconds per frame, 250 frames, that would be three and a half hours. However, if it was eight seconds per frame, it would be just 33 minutes. So that's, uh, what is that? One sixth? Yeah, one sixth of the time. So point being, baking certain things can save you a bucket load. Even if you're not in game development, if you're just using it for animations, it can really save you a heap of time. So that cycles baking in a nutshell. As you can see, it's very powerful and it's quite easy to use. Now, the obvious downside to baking, which I've yet to mention, is that the objects in your scene can't really be moved once it's been baked. Otherwise, the illusion will, of course, be broken because the baked shadows and lighting no longer match the scene. But if you only want to render a camera animation like this, Cycles Baking will be a huge time saver for you. Not to mention in gaming, where baking is essential for being able to play back a scene in real time. So now all the game designers out there can take full advantage of Cycles photorealism and port it into their game. So as you can see, it's a huge step forward for Blender and I'm sure the gaming community will soon be jumping on baking if they haven't already. Even I decided to give it a try on the weekend by making this little scene here. Um, anyway, that's it. If you haven't already, jump into Blender now and give Cycles Baking a try. Thanks for watching. Bye.